Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. So for people who are joining us for the first time, this is the channel where we sort of do a finishing program in order to take your uh, fundamental concepts that you've learned in your academic studies about uh, deep learning, machine learning, applied machine learning, AI and data science, and we apply it to real world problems and examples so that you can embellish your digital portfolio that can then help you get another job. So we've been doing this 10-week uh, program called Build Your Own Research Internship. And right now we are actually smack in the middle. So we are in our fifth week of Build Your Own Research Internship. So what I decided to do was to offer, so so far we've been building our technical profile. I've been showing how to, you know, code, do baselining and, and all of that good stuff. But this week on onwards, um, so I released two videos. One is on Tuesdays and the other one is on Thursday. While Thursday we will still be keeping on our technical technical aspects and, and applying them to coding. The Tuesday videos I wanted to use, and this is something where you would do when you are in, in a research internship in a company anyways, that you would start building and embellishing your digital portfolio. And if you're strategic about it, you can still be successful in a job hunt in this crazy pandemic COVID-19 situation. So what, what I will be doing uh, from this week onwards is every Tuesday, we will be dedicating our video towards embellishing what are some of the steps that we should be doing in order to ensure we have a solid profile that makes the cut that ensures you get your foot into the door and start getting those interview calls. So let's get straight to it. If this is of interest to you, please like, subscribe to this channel and share this video so we can help as many people as possible. I wanted to mention that now that uh, some companies are, are beginning to hire, uh, you know, even though the pandemic is still not over, uh, there is a huge push towards video conferencing and video interviews. And I have seen uh, some very good materials already existing in YouTube that give great tips and tricks as to how to ensure you you re really give your best personal self in these interviews uh, that are completely, you know, Zoom calls and, and digital uh, anyways. So I will be linking some of these great tutorials in the description box below. So going forward, the content in this channel is going to be tailored for data scientists, for, art, for artificial intelligence engineers, and for machine learning engineers in order to find their next you know, career move or for their next job. And in this case, today I wanted to bring to you three important tips for, for people who are trying to find a job in, in this particular market. So tip number one is be patient and keep an open mind. For anybody who's struggling to find a job in this market, well, the struggle is real. And we understand these are unprecedented times and there is a boom towards uh, digital shifts and we are all embracing it in the best way possible. But I would also like to say is now with, with things stabilizing a little bit, companies are, are starting to interview and there is a definitely a shift in the market. However, things are opening up again. I wanted to point out one strong uh, notion that I do see is keeping an open mind is specifically important. What I mean by that is that we, we might have a closed mindset and saying, you know, I have done a lot of data science projects, so I can only become a data scientist. So I have to only get data science jobs. But sometimes there, there could be a machine learning engineering job that you think could be relevant and you could do it well. Step number two research into the market and understand what are the skill sets and requirements in the current market. Uh, I have done another video and I will be linking that in the description box below where I show how to do a LinkedIn search in order to understand what are the skill sets that are relevant for the jobs right now. Uh, you might see that with the current uh, you know, pandemic and, and uh, job cuts that there has been a shift in the number of data scientists, in the number of AI scientist roles, and there might be a, a higher number of engineering roles. So you might find uh, a greater number of data engineers, uh, you might find uh, even machine learning engineers. And the prime difference, and this I can share with you from my understanding uh, in, as an industrial leader, 
is that the primary difference between a scientist and an engineering role is in in an engineer you 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 might even have to do you know production level coding uh, you you might be open to writing patents and and doing you know POCs uh, you know proof of concept projects however as a scientist uh, the goal might be just to, to do more blue sky research and again uh, this is just a generaliz generalization you might uh, be doing more uh, you know blue sky research and also writing a lot of fundamental papers uh, you know for that get uh, published at, at conferences. Uh, however, I will say that there is recently a shift. So there is a higher need for engineers. So um, which means that you might have to do more patent writing or, or more proof of concept projects or more, you know, production pipeline and, and to help the company in any way possible. So do do your research in, in a good way in order to understand what are the trends and what are some of the skill sets. So you might see that uh, there might be a, a recent increase in the number of C++. Uh, asking, uh, you know, job requirements, or there might be a, a higher requirement for PyTorch over TensorFlow, or vice versa. There, there might still be a, a high requirement for TensorFlow and PyTorch together. So do a very comprehensive search for the sort of jobs that you are looking for. Make sure you don't constrain them just by AI or just by machine learning, but look at AI, machine learning, and data science as a whole, and try to see if if you're seeing a higher trend for engineering versus scientist roles in your area of interest because location is key as well and and understand what are the top skill sets with respect to coding uh, examples so if, if they are looking for you know a particular language and expertise in that one particular language more then in that case you should again do the build your own research internship with that particular code base so that then you get the hands-on experience that you can then show for Step number three that I wanted to present today is how do you update your LinkedIn profile so that it best represents what you are and what you want. So it's not just a, a composite of all the experiences that you have. And of course, if you've been uh, gathering a lot of experience in, in a lot of different domains, your, your profile might really not explain that. So there is a certain way in which you should structure your LinkedIn profile uh, because LinkedIn has become a very strong tool. And uh, there are a lot of jobs that you can actually even hit in apply. And you, if you just have your resume handy, then your LinkedIn profile along with that resume becomes is, is good enough. You don't even need a cover letter on top of that. So you see your LinkedIn profile has to be extremely accurate and mark exactly who you are and what you want to do. So it's not just to, good enough to explain who you are, but it should be explaining why you are good for that particular job that you're applying for. So I will be doing two examples of how a LinkedIn profile should be explaining just that. One I will do with respect to my own profile and the second one I will be doing with respect to a student profile who did a very similar research project recently with me and I will be reviewing how you should really add on and, and what, what, can, what, what can help you and what can hurt you in order to then uh, make sure your LinkedIn profile is ready to go for any job application that you then want to apply to. So let's get started. Okay, so this is the profile of a student who I recently worked with on a, a very similar data science project. It was actually applied machine learning for a pedestrian intention prediction uh, project that they did in, in UC Berkeley. So I wanted to show uh, some of the tips and, and tricks in order to structure this profile in the best way possible. One thing that I wanted to actually mention, and I'm not sure if a lot of people know, is if you go uh, in, in, in your profile, if you go to more and do save to PDF, you actually end up getting this profile as a PDF and there you can actually look at what this profile uh, so ideally if you had uh, done uh, an in apply uh, as a you know apply using your LinkedIn only this would be the cover uh, you know document that would go with your resume and this is how you you should check is this information accurate? Is this format accurate? Would you like a, a similar, you know, format of information to go to, uh, you know, your your possible employers? And one thing which is extremely important in this case is. Uh, 
ensure that there is no breaks in in time so if even if you have like taken a a break to do something maybe you've explained them in this uh, you know even in this short three pager resume that that becomes and in the, the the second thing is maybe your your undergraduate was in a different specialization but now you're actually looking for a job in a different specialization so for instance in this case this particular candidate uh, had a, a bachelor's degree in, in mechanical engineering but however uh, currently they're looking for a data science job so uh, you know typically you would assume that somebody who's, who's looking for a data science job should probably have had like electrical or computer science or even an IT uh, sort of a, a degree so if it is different in any way then make sure you explain that and why you should be uh, you know employed for this particular job using the summary so that is super important all right so let's go into the profile per se uh, first of all uh, the, the most important thing is the about section and like I said here it, it is most important for you to explain uh, why and this is a larger explanation will be necessary especially if you are trying to, to switch your specializations uh, you know if, if you had a different degree but now if you're trying to apply for a for a different uh, sort of a market so that explanation uh, is, is super important make sure you highlight okay so once the about is done next we go to the experience section which is by far the most important section uh, whenever you are looking at per prospective employers so make sure you have as much detail in them as possible and especially let's say if, if it's a class project uh, make sure that all of them you you have enough bullet points let's say you have at least three to five bullet points uh, showing what you actually did and make sure you always start them with a verb so you've led or you delivered or you contributed in, in order to to make sure that you're you're catering to all the different things uh, that were done uh, you know during the class project uh, the same way if it was a capstone project then uh, you also do the same thing so led contributed trained organized so uh, the the the, the verb should be very similar and uh, you know after that the, the next section that that comes up is is education like uh, i mentioned so make sure that everything is in chronological order if there is any way you can link your your website or your profiles please you know do make sure you do that licenses and certifications uh, of course uh, are, are super important now skills uh, definitely these are very important because whenever you do uh, whenever you do apply for an automatic uh, you know job through LinkedIn skills will be one of the pri primary things that uh, the automatic uh, system that uh, LinkedIn has it, it tries to match you by so ensure that you have as many skill sets that you have uh, of course they may be endorsed or maybe not that's not a problem but you should have as many laid out here as possible and finally I am recently seeing there is a trend uh, of, of recommendations that, that people are you know have a, a lot of recommendations in their LinkedIn it's really not necessary uh, and again instead of having four and five recommendations that are you know neither here nor there or you know they're not very strong rather just have one recommendation which is very strong or not have at all because typically these are things that employers are not really interested in and I'll, I'll be frank here so if you have all of the sections uh, as lucid and as crystal clear like I said explanation is, needs to be there if you have to explain the why you know why you have you've changed your domain and why you why you should be the, the candidate to best represent uh, the, the the your new company's uh, needs and responsibilities so you need to make sure that you've you've mentioned them in, in as crystal clear a way as as possible and uh, so that your employer has the best uh, understanding of yourself uh, through your digital portfolio okay so i wanted to start by reviewing my own linkedin uh, profile and showing you know how everything is structured so here again uh, you know picture and everything of course that's necessary but again i'm not going into detail in in that case uh, of course i have my uh, websites and everything linked uh, of course uh, so here I, i'll start with the about and i've kept it as a, a little broader but because of course i have a, a very different set of uh, expert experiences one uh, is again from industry and another is from academia so i am actually here in, in the about section I'm, I'm trying to explain how i've worked through a different you know gamut of of uh, 
projects and that's why what I believe is is in out-of-the-box solutions being applied to real-world problems one thing I said do want to mention is uh, in in the headline uh, a lot of people I'm seeing that uh, you know if they're looking for jobs they they say you know actively looking for jobs uh, you know actively looking for uh, you know specific kinds of, of domains and that's totally fine as well and if you're not then in, you can actually put in uh, who you should go by so that's your uh, you know headline Next, this is how I have added uh, this uh, experiences uh, as an influencer, educator and subject matter expert in my YouTube channel. Uh, I've added the, the, the channel link and again this place is for students enthusiasts in the field of applied machine learning, deep learning and data science and AI. And like I'm mentioning uh, the build your own research internship, it's sort of a finishing program where your goal is to, you know, expertise and, and tools to ensure hands on experience uh, in research practices. Uh, and what what we are trying to do is, uh, you know, to get tips, strategies, ideas to plan technical career decisions and again, uh, to to help embellish our digital portfolio right that's exactly what we are doing and but wherever I have details I actually do provide them for, such as whenever I was a faculty at University of Washington Bothell so I have details there whenever I was doing my PhD candidate uh, research internship and everything so make sure everything looks as similar as possible every section you start like I said with the verb and have as much detail in it because this will become your top sheet for your job application and again then your education volunteer experience I have also added a lot of publications uh, again these are not all the publications but some just to uh, make sure that you know uh, you have something linked here for for people to understand what you really work on so some of the publications are here of course courses uh, some things that, that I've taught and languages are, are important and uh, again uh, some of the skills and, and endorsements and, and everything should be there as well so that is how your LinkedIn profile should be complete if you are an experienced uh, you know member uh, of, of industry and if you're trying to switch your job make sure that that explanation as to why you were doing something else and why you are suitable for this new uh, type of job category that you're looking for comes off in your about because that is going to be the section that goes in the top sheet whenever you go in to apply through LinkedIn apply. See you next time.